I have heard of prompts with long context windows, RAG, and model tuning. Which one should I use for my AI application? Great question. Let me show you. Welcome to the show, Gleb. Uh, you work in developer relations at Google Cloud? Yes, I do. Uh, my official title is advocate, and it has two sides. I'm an advocate of the developer community to our internal teams, providing feedback and trying to make our products better. From the other side, I'm trying to explain and share knowledge and ways when and how our cloud tools and products can help our customers. I think I have a good insights about databases, working with databases and data in general since 90s in different roles. Wow, that's a lot of database experience. Now, I've heard that you can use prompts with long context windows, RAG, and model tuning in uh, AI applications. Which one should I use when? <laughs> Let's talk about each of those. OK, sounds good. Let's start with prompts with long context windows. Uh, what does that mean? It means that we put all our data in the prompt. Gemini 1.5 Pro has a context window of 2 million tokens. That means we can put a lot of data in the prompt. For example, that's enough to add the entire novel War and Peace from Leo Tolstoy. Wow, all of War and Peace, that's a lot. So before we shot this video, you showed me a data set of flights. Could you put that entire data set in the prompt? Because that sounds like an easy solution. Well, models aren't great in tokenizing the structured data. Why not? Models are built to tokenize uh, regular text. It is hard for them to make tokens for structured data. Here's the, an example of regular text. The quick brown do fox jumps over the lazy dog. The model makes each word its own token and adds one token for the period at the end. That's good, only 10 tokens. And this is what it looks like if I tokenize some rows from the flight data set. The model is struggling to find patterns. So each digit and space becomes its own token. Got it. Uh, but besides that, did it work? <laughs> you can run into other problems as well. Even if you can fit an entire novel into the context window, structured data is often longer than that. When I tried to load the entire data set of flights, I got an error. The data set was too large. Um, I had to team data set to find uh, flights to make it fit. Uh, this is what the code looked like when I tried to load the entire data. OK, I see. Uh, what kind of results did you get, Gleb? With the team data set, I asked for, for a specific flight. It returned the correct answer, but it took a long time. Every time I would ask a new question, the model has to process the entire data set again. This leads to long response times. <laughs> yeah, a user would have to be very patient to wait that long. You can cache the data. The Gemini API supports uploading data once and then caching it. So it is used for multiple requests. That way, we don't have to load data every time, but the model still has to process it. When I tried that, the response time was significantly shorter for subsequent requests, but still long. Yeah, uh, that's better, but still not a great response time. Uh, using a long context window helps you practice being patient. <laughs> uh, jokes aside, that's too long for a user to wait in interactive application. But it is also easy to write code to add your data to the prompt. So, this approach can be really useful if you are building a demo or proof of concept before moving to a more efficient approach. And I guess some applications need to remember a lot of conversation history to be useful. Good point. That's right. Also, a, using a long context window can be useful for remember a lot of interaction 
interactions between two sides, or if you are troubleshooting different ways for your AI application. Got it. Uh, so next on the list is RAG, Retrieval Augmented Generation. That's right. My data set of flights is structured like a table. So why not put it into a database and give the AI model access to the database? That makes sense. Uh, how did it work out? It was a lot faster. The application can get information for a specific flight from the database, which is less work than trying to parse the entire data set every time. Databases are designed to give you a response based on structured data very quickly. Yeah, that's a lot faster. Now, this flight data is very structured, but you could use the RAG for less structured data as well like a long text. Uh, we would use a slightly different approach for that. Uh, yeah, many AI workloads deal with long text. Uh, for example, you might build an application that answers workers' questions about the employee handbook. Exactly. In that case, we would uh, split the employee handbook into chunks, create an embedding for each chunk, and then search for similarities in embedding between the user question and the chunks. Then the application would feed those chunks into the AI prompt so it could compose the answer using that authoritative data from your database. That is a different way to, of doing it, but it is still RAG. Google has published a code lab that walks you through how to build an application using RAG. We also have an example of using RAG with database lookup or using vector search on unstructured data depending on the type of the request. This is GitHub. Excellent. I will add links to the code labs and the repo in the video description below. Uh, so, Gleb, when would you use RAG? RAG is fast, so it is good for interactive application where a user is waiting for response. It is good for a big change in data set, like data set of flights I showed earlier. Finally, RAG is good for multimodal requests where the input can be a mix of text, images, video, etc. LLM vectors works well for images as well, which means vector search works well, which means RAG works well. Makes sense. Uh, the last item on the list is model tuning. What does it mean? It means that you tune a foundational model with your own training data. The tuned model will pick up the patterns in your data set and change its output based on those patterns. Mm, I see. And do these flight departure times in your data set, do they follow patterns? <laughs> Not really. If uh, <laughs> there are flights between 9.30 and 12.30 every day, the model might think that there is a pattern and my hallucinate, invent a 11.30 flight. So model tuning works better for less structured training data, like long text. For example, it probably would work well for knowledge bases like your employing handbook that mentioned earlier or other cases. Mm, I see. Uh, so in what other situations would you use model tuning? A well-tuned model can respond very quickly and accurately. So it is good for interactive application. Those applications uh, which need fast and predictable response times. Oh, I see. So not only fast response times, but also response times uh, that are similar for different requests? That's right. It provides consistent response time, but model tuning takes time, can be expensive, and requires careful data preparation. It is best suited for application needing very low latency and when the training data reflect consistent trends and principles, uh, like writing style. Examples include uh, mimicking style for scientific papers or novels. Uh, model tuning is less effective with the data like flight times, which likes those cons consistent patterns. Mm, I see. All right, Gleb, let's recap. There are three main ways of feeding your data into AI applications, right? That's right. Uh, the first one is to use long context window. This 
good for demos that you need to build quickly for interactive application. Uh, and have to remember a lot of past conversation and sometimes for just troubleshooting and tinkering around. Ah, and then there was retrieval augmented generation, right? Yes, we often call it RAG for short. <laughs> RAG shines in online interactive applications because it is reasonably fast. It can also deal with large data sets and data sets that change often. Finally, it is good for multimodal requests where you send more than just text uh, to the LLM. You can send images, videos, for example, and use vector search to narrow down the result. Okay, and what was the last one? The last one is uh, model tuning. It provides fast, predictable response time, but it only works if the training data doesn't change very often and you have humans and machine resources to prepare the training data. It works best when the data itself is suitable for tuning a foundational model. Well, thanks for showing us when to use each of these methods, Gleb. Thank you for having me, Martin. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Gleb or me, please uh, let us know in the comments. Also, do let us know what you thought of this episode. We read every single comment. Until next time!